Hi there. Uh, in this video, trying to be clever here, it's uh, text following the path. We even do this where it kind of goes around the top and around the bottom. Let's learn how to do that now in Photoshop. All right, to get started, we are going to do the squiggly line first, then we'll do that kind of bad shape. So the technique is called type on a path. So we need a path to start with. There's a few ways of making it. Um, we're gonna use the pen tool. If you click and hold down the pen tool for a while, hold, 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 and we're gonna use the freeform pen tool. If you are a Jedi master with the pen tool or the curvature tool pen tool, you can go and use those. But if you're a mere mortal, grab uh, the freeform. It is just as it sounds, you can just draw things. Now. And um, to make your drawings a little bit nicer, there's a sneaky trick. See this little cog here? Click on that. Okay, what you can do is says where it says curve fit, you can crank it up a little bit to say something like, it goes up to 10, but 10 is probably too much. Go up to something like 5. Okay, and what it allows you to do is when you draw, I'm going to draw like a little wiggly line there, it just makes your lines look a little smoother. Turn it down to 0 and it will follow your mouse perfectly. It's up to you what you want to do. So that's basically it. Okay, um, paths are weird. They don't appear in your layers panel. Okay, they appear in this paths panel, which we're not going to really look at. All we need to do is go to layers, grab the type tool. You don't need to change anything. Okay, just grab the regular old type tool and watch my cursor here. Okay, we'll zoom in so you can see my cursor's got the box around it. Watch this when it changes. Can you see a little line through it? That means it's going to follow this path. So be careful where you click on this line, okay, because that's where the text is going to start. So I'm going to click once kind of towards the end here, and voila, um, I start typing start typing and so it's going to follow the line around if you're finding yours is not working it's probably because i'm going to undo i'm going to go back to the beginning here let's say it's not working i'm going to hit escape on my keyboard that is the i didn't mean it button okay and get out of that and before you go and click on here is to pick a font size so you can do it at the top here if you've got a font size of something really big it just doesn't work to fit on this line so it just it feels like it's not working it is just your font's huge so pick something really small start with five point or something i've got ten point and it worked fine click once um start typing here notice i'm a terrible speller lots of deleting okay so once you've got it here you can do some adjustments to do the adjustments um you can select the text okay and i'm going to make a bold text here, I'm going to pick a color that you can actually see, dark green. Cool. And say we want to adjust a few things. Um, say we want to adjust the start point or the ending point. Actually, before we do that, you can just say uh, center, and it will put it kind of in the middle of the beginning and end. But let's say we want to leave it left aligned, and we want to just move this along. Okay, to do that, it's this tool here. Okay, it's underneath the type tool. It's called the path selection tool. Okay, you might have to click and hold down. You want the top one here. With it selected, there's two main things. Okay, there are there is this dot at the end. Okay, and there's this little cross at the beginning. You can kind of see the um, icon change. See the little arrow that appears either side. It's the beginning and the end. So I can click, hold, and drag it to say that's the beginning. Or I can drag it all the way to the end here. Okay, and make sure it's at the beginning. Now. I'm very like specific about where I'm drawing because I know if I click, hold, and drag this, and I drag it down, ah on the other side and uh, everything's lost so it can be a little weird to get used to okay if you do get it on the other side find the beginning again the little cross and then try and flip it over and oh man it can get weird even i find it a little bit troubling so i'm gonna flip it over again so at uh, the cross here is the little sorry the little cross is the beginning and this oh <laughs> i leave it in here because i'm going to show you it so it's a little bit hard so the cross is the beginning. This guy here can be a little problem. He's the end of the line. Not there. It's wherever this dot is. Because what can happen is this. Oh, we don't do that either. Flip it back across. See this little dot? If I drag it up here, can you see how the word disappears? It's just not enough room, okay, for that word to appear with this dot so far up. So you can drag it back down. Be careful not to drag it on the other side. To move this whole thing around, just go back to your move tool and you can click and drag it. Go and start editing again. Make sure you have that line selected and either grab the type tool to adjust the text or this path selection tool. And we're going to start working on the circle because what we want to do is this where it goes top and bottom. So there is not a, like a magical way of doing it. It's basically what we did up here but using a circle. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab my tools over here. 
Okay, my shape tools, we looked at these earlier. I'm gonna use a lips, but what I'm gonna do in this case is instead of using the shape, which draws my shapes like earlier, okay, I'm gonna switch it to path. The big thing to remember though is later on in this course, it remembers paths. When I draw things, remember they don't appear as layers, they appear in here, it's a bit of a weird thing. So later on in this course, when you're trying to draw a circle and it's not appearing, um, you can email me, of course, okay, but it's probably because you haven't switched it back to shape. I'll just show you that. Just switch it back to shape when you're finished. It causes less problems, but I want it, this case to be a path, okay? And I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to draw it roughly the right size. Okay, I'm going to grab my, I'm going to move it around using the, uh, this tool here, okay, the uh, path selection tool. I'm going to grab it so it's kind of there. I'm going to transform it using my control T and I'm going to get it so it's kind of sitting inside here. We need to adjust the circle later on. Okay, return when you're finished. Now all we need to do is go my type tool and just be careful when you are clicking on this line to not get this version, which has got a circle around it or the square around it. This version here with a line through it. You can see it's a little tricky. I'm going to click there at the top and I'm going to say this is Scott Shoes. I want to do a few things. I want to rotate it around. Now, what we can do is you can play around with the, um, the I guess, center alignment, right alignment to try and get it. Or what I like to do is just rotate it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my move tool because I'm halfway through typing, so some of my shortcuts don't work. If I try and type the command T now, it doesn't work because I'm halfway through typing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to my move tool. I'm going to go to edit transform and I'm going to use rotate. Now I hope you're okay for a little bit of a shortcut. So I'm using command T. We've used this a few times in the course for resizing, right? We hold shift, okay, and we hold down, remember, option on a Mac or alt on the PC. So shift and option, okay, and I can shrink this thing in and out. It's kind of half what I want, but I want to rotate it as well. The cool thing about using that shortcut, which is command T on a Mac, control T on a PC, is that, watch this, if I grab the corner, it's scale, but if I hover just out here, I'm not doing anything, I'm just moving my mouse out here. Can you see it turns into the, like a little rotation arrow? So now I can click, hold, and drag it. Just kind of rotate it around, move it here, kind of get it to where I need it to be. Enter on my keyboard just to commit that. I'm going to pick a font, I'm going to use white. Font size is going to be a lot smaller, six point. Moving around the line again, so I'm going to have to rotate it again. Command T and just drag it around. Let's go shoes. Scale that up a bit. Another little thing that's happening there is I'm trying to drag and it's kind of like snapping to things, which is kind of cool. But sometimes you just like go where I want you to go yeah, instead of jumping around. You can get a view and turn off smart guidance, but what I like to do is on my keyboard is just use the arrow keys. So look down your keyboard, just the up, down, left, right. You can tap things around. It's kind of handy. Hit return when you're ready. That is going to be the top part of my circle. Now, what you assume is you can type on the bottom of that same circle. That's not possible. What you need to do is just have a second ellipse, make sure it's set to path, and draw out another ellipse. Don't worry too much about the size because you're going to have to resize it to suit the circle and the font you pick. Okay, to move it around, go back to the direct selection tool, get it roughly in the right position, grab the type tool, click once down here, and I'm going to say, Established, which totally missed it. <laughs> Escape key. I'm going to go to edit, uh, step backwards. Remember, you've got to look out for that perfect icon. Okay, so I've got it flashing in the right place now. EST 2019. So it's doing what the top one did, okay, which is the outside. Now remember when we were doing this and we flipped that over by accident? We want to do it on purpose now. So grab the direct selection tool. What we'll do is click, hold, and drag it. And you want to drag it so it's on that other side. It's a bit fiddly, I know. Just click and hold and drag it until it flips onto the other side. Now I'm going to use my, uh, back to my move tool, using Command T, Control T on PC, to rotate it around to get it to kind of where I want to go. Turn on my keyboard. It's looking okay. Now if you are thinking, that seemed kind of painful, Dan. It is kind of painful in Photoshop. It does it fine. Illustrator does it better, as well as InDesign. They do this kind of like type on a path thing a lot. Nicer, and there's a little bit more sophisticated tools, but Photoshop does it fine ish. Now you can leave now. I'm going to go and play with my fonts. I'm going to grab my type tool. I am going to say you are the light version. I want it all to be light.
light. I'm gonna play around with the tracking as well. Hit escape, I'm gonna undo. I'm gonna be the light version. I want you to be the super heavy version. You can see I kind of adjust the lines. There's a lot of rotating to get everything to look nice. Same with established. I'm actually gonna drop down the font size to something smaller. The same thing here. So I'm gonna make you the big heavy one. Finding it hard to select on? I am finding it hard to. Next to my move tool, transform it around a little bit. Actually, what I might do before I rotate it around with this layer selected, this one here we haven't really looked at. It's the it's called tracking or kerning. Okay, it's the space between letters. So I'm gonna drag it up or down. So I'm gonna say I want it to be about 50. Because because it's on the inside of the circle, they're kind of starting to touch. So with Scott shoes, okay, I want it to maybe tuck it in a little bit because it's expanded out, so maybe minus 15. Now there's a lot of rotating and resizing. Cool, so we're nearly at the end, or we're at the end. What I'm gonna do is add that kind of S in the middle here and set you a little project. So I've called mine Scott shoes. You give yours your own name, pick your own fonts, see if you can get the type to bend around, make it look nicer than my version. And we're gonna pick a big kind of like hero, we're picking a logo type. And I'm just gonna cheat by grabbing the type tool, uh, clicking once out here. I'm gonna type a capital S, I'm gonna go through my fonts, and I've already gone through my fonts. Lying, it's uh, the one that I want is, so it's not a logo I've designed, I've cheated. I just use the font, where is it called? It's called Hobo? Hobos? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. And I'm going to grab my font size and just make it nice and big. Uh, you probably don't have that font, so go through and find a font that you like as a nice big kind of logo type. And I want to see what you make. Okay, so you might have a really long name. Okay, so, um, but give it your name, pick some fonts, uh, circles, colors. I'd love to see a screenshot of what you make for your brand. Doesn't even have to be shoes. Just be your name. Just wanted you to prove to me you can do type on a path and out of when you're posting it, okay, give me a out of ten how painful it was. Okay, I still find it painful and I'm I'm pretty good at this. So you might find it even more painful. So out of ten, ten being mind blowingly brain melting painful, and any one being super, super easy. I don't know what you're going on about, Dan. So send it to me on social media, Instagram, I bring your own laptop, on Twitter, I'm Dan Loves Adobe, or just post it here on this page. Thanks for tuning in, one of the longer ones. I will see you in the very next video.